New administration in the United States. What does that Biden administration mean to real estate? And we're going to check out Bear's 2020 color palette today on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. Welcome to Wandering But Not Lost, your online source for finding balance so that you can align, connect, and prosper. I'm living right here now and I don't want to miss out. Is this what life's all about? The world is calling and I'm listening. Yeah, I'm listening. And now your hosts, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Welcome to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 151. As always, you can find our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. John O'Brien, the day has finally come. There's been a change in administration. Uh, it was an interesting, interesting, it was a beautiful inauguration, you know, as inaugurations go. And a lot of, a lot of new things are going to be happening. So I know what we're going to talk about today, but why don't you tell our guests what we're going to be talking about today? Yeah, I want to just talk about... Um what potentially could be coming down the pike, some real things that are happening, things that are impacting our industry right now around the uh, eviction and foreclosure moratorium. Uh, executive order just signed yesterday. What does that all mean to us? What's happening? Kind of an overview of what's happening in 2021 with the real estate industry right now. It's all good news, by the way. Yeah. So we'll talk about that. Um, now, we you know, we promised the last week that we were gonna have a much better, before I jump into the, the podcast today on my side, I, for those of you that are watching us on replay or catching us on YouTube, um, Matt has dialed in his new professional setup. Well done, Matt Emerson. You're looking good. Your background looks great. I have made my move. I'm broadcasting from beautiful Wesley Chapel, Florida. And we're having some issues with my camera not being right. So we had to go back to the old setup, the new studio. But because the camera is not capturing it right, you're kind of seeing all of the studio and I'm all washed out. But we're going to get there. So maybe next week. You know what? It's resilience. Exactly. Practice Practice makes perfect. I believe that's yeah. just the motto, right? It is, but it's kind of exciting. We're really stuck taking it up a notch. That's our goal to provide uh, quality content and have it look good as well. Make us look better, perhaps. So I, I'm going to just share some notes and, and things that, are, that I have for a little research and things that happened already with President Biden signing one of the, I don't know, 15, 17 executive orders they signed. One of them in particular is impacting our industry. And as you well know, those of you that are real estate professionals, this extension of the eviction and foreclosure moratorium, which had is is was signed yesterday and it's going to go through the end of February. Now, I'll talk in a minute about the stimulus bill that he's proposing. That it's got to obviously make it through both houses of Congress at the $1.9 trillion mark that it is. Clearly, it'll be negotiated in some things. So we'll talk on that in a minute. It does address, he does have some things to address what I think is the biggest issue. If we keep on kicking this can down the road of uh, all these people who haven't been paying rent and people who are in forbearance, I'm going to go through those numbers in a minute here too. It's, 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 not, it's not everybody. Some people are working it out. But there are a lot of people who haven't paid their rent. Whether they do throw them all to the curb, they're not. Right. So there's things in this new package to try to work it out to get landlords whole and assist renters who are behind. And the same thing with foreclosures. So, but uh, Fannie, the federal housing, you know, Fannie and Freddie basically had yesterday uh, for the fifth time this has been extended since the pandemic. Right. It it, it basically cr stopped c extended the moratorium so that lenders cannot start the foreclosure process or um, do evictions, real estate owned evictions for loans backed by Fannie or Freddie. Okay, so this is just the government that Jesse backed until February 28th. Now, all that's going to do is another month from now and we're going to have to deal with it again. But as I mentioned, I'll talk about it in the in the stimulus plan that Biden is, is putting forward. Um, HUD had already done that too, by the way. So FHA loans had already extended from December. They ended in December. The, these moratoriums, which is interesting because like in Nevada, when I was in Nevada, people were starting to, to evict people because yeah. the federal thing even went through December. Um, even though the federal mandate went through December, states were like, well, we're going to do what we want. And they had 
not extended in some cases. And so various things, people were starting to get evicted and, and so on. So people worry about the foreclosures. And this is a, a, a statistic from Black Knight, which is the whole FNF, you know, um, the guy that owns the Golden Knights. Uh, I can't think of his name right now. Uh, in the the Fidelity National Family of Companies. So they do a lot of data and statistics. They're estimating seriously past due mortgages. So we're just going to talk about mortgages for a second. 90 day plus delinquencies. We're still about 1.8 million above where we were before the pandemic. So that is almost 2 million homes that are in 90 day delinquencies. Now, they, hopefully I'll show the stats in a second here. If you if you're listening, you can go to YouTube and, and pick these or go to the show notes and you can get the images that we're, we're going to display here. And by the way, I get these a lot of these statistics from Keeping Current Matters. Keeping Current Matters, I swear, I, I'm not big on like, hey, go buy this and go buy that. But this is probably the best investment that I've ever made in my real estate career for staying on top of what's happening in the market and having actual tools that I can share with clients. We love it on our team. It helps us create our monthly market report. I use four to five slides out of that every time. And I'm going to share a slide with you today that is about what's happening with the people that are in mortgage forbearance. And Janet, not, uh, on top of that, it's got all sorts of fantastic things you can use on your social media media if you're going to post there. So it's not oh, just yeah. a client tool. There's just a ton of things in there. There's a daily great. blog post. I mean, I yeah. go every day and go in and I use it and I post a blog post and we put it on our social media and then I pull content and put it into the newsletter that I, I was mm -hmm. just working on yesterday, as a matter of fact. So a couple of things just to kind of go back and forth. So we know for sure that the moratorium is extended through the end of February. That's going to give the Biden administration time to figure out. And, and honestly, this new stimulus package, 1.2 trillion, there's so 1.9 trillion is yeah. what it's proposed to be. Clearly that's not going to pass in its current form. And they think it's going to be. And so if you've been hearing about second stimulus checks, right, this is a big, huge part of this, right? Um, many of you may have already received a $600, um, what do you call it? Uh, the $600 stimulus thing that already passed. Uh, now we're looking at, there's argument over whether it's an extra 2000 or is it just going to be 1400 to make it 2000. That's all part of this stimulus package. That's going to go in and get negotiated among uh, all the other stuff that's in there. But I'm just going to focus on the things that impact the real estate industry, but it, but getting another stimulus, if you are, uh, and, and all that other stuff, we should probably save it for another podcast, the PPP, individual agents and stuff applying for all that there's ways that you might be able to get some of this stimulus money to help you as an independent contractor whether yep. or not you know that definitely just go check some of that stuff out online um, a lot of that is just starting rolling out from the last package uh, but i want to stay focused on mortgage uh, guys that are behind so 1.8 black knight saying 1.8 million people uh, more than were pre-pandemic levels. Now, obviously there would have been a continuing uptick of people. There's always people that are going to get behind in their mortgages and so forth. But clearly this pandemic created, a, you know, a nightmare for folks. So a couple things, why do we not feel, I've been saying this all last year, say, I say it when I do my monthly um, market update and all the, you know, and I'm no economist or anything. I'm just getting informed by all of them. And so I can share it with my clients and share it with my agents that I coach and train and that are on my team. There's a couple things that are so different about the last time, the last big recession that we had, that was a housing crisis. And one, the one big thing that's going to keep a lot of people from not going to foreclosure, if they can figure out what they're going to do with themselves based on their individual situations, whether they, right. where are they going to move is they have equity. 70% of homeowners in our country right now have at least 20% equity. So I'm showing, I'm showing a chart right now that I got from, again, Keeping Current Matters, that just shows the average gain in equity of, of homes that have a mortgage was $17,000, a gain in the, in the past year. The current average equity of a home that has a mortgage on it is 194 now, 1000 Now, that is, that is such a bad number to kind of talk about because, honestly, real estate's local. And if you're in California, uh, where Matt is, I'm sure the average sales price is 600 you know, 600 or what do you think? And that's on the low side. Six to 700. Well, yeah. in Vegas, it, it's 350. That's, it's a little about the same where I am here in the Tampa area, the new Tampa area, it's, you know, 350, 400. All right. So yeah. that is just a, across the nation. So wherever you are, it's going to be different. But the bottom line is people have equity. There's a 38% of people, uh, homes that have a uh, 38% of all homes are free and clear, which is so cool. So another interesting statistic. 
Um, so the, it, there's another statistic here just saying how big the equity grew. Now, why did the equity grow? Because housing prices have gone up. Why have housing prices gone up over the last year? Several things. Number one, low interest rates, no inventory, super low inventory because everybody was staying where they're at. They didn't know what to do. They couldn't find something else. Sellers have not put their homes on the market and they have equity, right? So they're staying put. If they were behind in their mortgage, they got a mortgage forbearance. And we'll, let me go through what those mortgage forbearance numbers are because that's really interesting. And so high demand, low interest rate and um, high buyer demand you know, for properties have created the inflated prices across the country. There has been no real negative in prices. So now how long is that going to last? That's the big question, right? Now, honestly, I st uh, all the experts, all the economists are, are still saying that the, the issues with inventory are going to continue until a couple things happen. We do start getting some more foreclosures and short sales. Now, why I think it's right now, it's less than 1% across the country generally. 1% to 2% is the most you'll see all year long with distressed properties. Now, when we were back in 2008, holy crap, in Vegas, it was 70, 75% yeah. of our market was you know, a distressed property of an REO or a short sale. So we're never going to get back to that. Is it going to uptick? Yes, because here's why. There are people that are in mortgage forbearances. Um, well, first of all, let me talk about the interest rates. Uh, it's interesting. There's a lot of stuff, a lot of people talking about what's going to happen with the interest rates. Uh, are they going to stay there? I don't believe they're going to stay below 3% for too much longer. They are. If you have great credit, you can get, to, they've already started to tick up a little bit. 2.65, they hit a new low. You know, who would believe it even would go even lower? It went down That's to 2.65 right. a couple weeks ago. But everyone is pointing towards it's going as the economy starts to recover. And it's all about the stimulus. It's a couple of things. The virus has to get under control. Yeah, I was going to say, it's not just about the stimulus. It's really about they go together. Virus yeah. under control and stimulated economy is what's going to potentially get the interest rates to come back up because they're down because of all of that. Keeping them you know, inf down as deflated as much as they are to, to at least get people out spending and doing things and so on. So... Uh, even if they start to creep up, all of these mortgage experts and economists don't think it's going to be, it's going to be three point something like under three and a half. Okay. I don't care what anybody says, three, 4% amazing interest rates, right? Yeah, no kidding. Okay. So, uh, and th there's a chart here showing it per, this is about a, a month and a half old. So I bet these might change a little bit with the new administration as they start talking about the things that are happening. That's where the stock market and mortgage interest rates and all those things start to bounce around a little bit. But this is predicting for the four quarters of Q of 21, the highest that anybody is saying, the average of all four, which is NAR, the Mortgage Bankers Association, Fannie and Freddie, is 3.07%. Okay, we're all good, guys, on mortgage rates. So a little bit on the stimulus package, the $1.9 trillion, which uh, Biden's um, administration is calling the American Rescue Plan. It, it includes a call to further extend the national, I mean, the uh, evictions and moratorium until September. And I think that's to be able to get things worked out for how is it all going to get resolved. You know, the challenge we're going to have is if the, if the government doesn't help figure out how people get out of that by, as part of the stimulus, making, helping the people holding the loans, you know, working that all out, um, mortgage, uh, letting people redo their loans. These are all the things that I think are going to have to come out on how do people, and how, how do you restructure a loan that's already at 3%? Do you know what I mean? It's not like that back in the foreclosure crisis, we had that, the short sale, people did a loan modification. Yep. And they were able to bring their payments down or, or you know, the forbearance is what we've been in. The forbearance issue is ending right now in March and April and all of the in March for the most part. March is when the, the CARES Act, the first bill that came out after the pandemic, gave people six months and another six months to be if they can show their lender that they have a reason, uh, you know, a reason that they can't make their payments that they won't get foreclosed on. That's the that's what's in the CARES Act. So they're working on a similar thing, but they're trying to extend it to September 30th. And we're just gonna have to stay tuned to see what happens. And as as real estate professionals, we've got to stay on top of all this. Uh, so I have a couple things besides keeping current matters, I think that you really need to subscribe to. 
so that you can get this information coming in and you're hearing about it and you're staying on top of it, which is part of how you stay an industry expert, right? Um, so what else is in this package that impacts real estate? A lot, a lot of uh, funding going towards affordable housing. And boy, there's just going to be so much argument over this in the in the Congress because if you if you do this one thing, then it impacts this. And this is where we sometimes get to a standstill in our government because of can't of not finding a compromise. So 30 billion in funding for emergency rental, energy and water assistance for hard hit households, plus five billion in emergency assistance to people experiencing or at risk of homelessness. So this is where there's this package of the people who are renters or even people that might be getting into foreclosure. I don't know what those pro programs look like because when they put these things together, it's like, this is what we want to do. And then we have to get people to figure out what it is. Right. Um, now, a couple other challenges that are happening in our industry is home construction. It was so interesting studying this, Matt, reading up on this. And it's all about what our government does that impacts and has dominoes, domino effects. So under the Trump administration, there were a lot of things that went on with um, immigration and uh, trade that have that I didn't even quite realize until I read some articles on this that have negatively impacted the new home construction business. Why? One, labor. So the cost of labor for a lot of new homes and subcontractors went up because a lot of the folks that work construction were concerned about immigration or left or didn't come in or just all, all, I mean, just, just, just think about that for a second, who works on a lot of the construction crews. So there was that. And because of the trade policies, lumber, metals, different things, the prices of those went up. So that has impacted the home buyer because and I, I've seen it in Vegas big time. I'm sure I'll see it out here in Florida when I start looking at all the new homes, the cost of a new home is, is, gone, is skyrocketed. Sure. So they have, so that that is happening. Um, and so there's some things in this plan also to try to um, help in the, in the home construction to encourage builders to build more is really the bottom line. And also to build more affordable housing. Well, they can only do that if their margins are going to work. Right. So it's all about affordability. So one, one thing that is kind of exciting that could impact all of us if this could get passed is a $15,000 first time home buyer tax credit. Now what's different about this tax credit as it's proposed again, who knows what the final thing will be is it acts like a down payment assistance right away. So it's worked out. So it's basically funded by the government and it's people the first time the way he's written it, they, the team has written it is it's a first time home buyer is somebody who has not had a mortgage in the last three years. Okay. So that's interesting to me because it's not yeah. a first time home buyer, but if you don't have, if you have people that don't have down payment ready, but they have good credit scores and they have jobs and they can qualify, they could get a 50, a $15,000 will go a long way to getting somebody as part of their down payment and it's yeah, all okay. in the tax credit. Right. So that's yeah. kind of exciting. If that can come through, it will certainly help. Um, so the other things that are in this stimulus package that are impacting the, the way they are, is trying to get the banks, the big banks, to go back to FHA lending. Again, this is all around the Biden theme of more affordable housing and helping the middle class, getting the American dream, more people being able to get into homes. Why? Because FHA loans, that's at 3.5% or less down payment. And when we had the last crisis, okay, with the, the banks and so forth, many of the big banks got burned a lot on, on the, from their point of view, they got burned because they started to be held accountable to the rules of uh, that were put in place with the dot Frank and all that. Sure. So a lot of them got away from doing FHA financing. So most of the FHA financing are done through, um, you know, smaller mortgage guys, mortgage banks and so forth, bankers and brokers. So that's interesting because it just, uh, it opens it up to more people, more, um, uh, more opportunity. There's more money in the bigger companies to, to perhaps get the lending out there to more people. And there's a little bit of information in here about s seeing if the FHA could reduce its monthly MIP, the mortgage insurance premium, which impacts the person's, you know, uh, overall payment and so forth. So these are all things towards affordable housing, uh, some things on new construction, encouraging, as I mentioned, uh, builders to build more. Um, now, what's intriguing there when you start to read both sides of the story, right, because there's always two sides, if there are credits for builders to go out and do more multifamily housing to help, you know, apart not just apartments, but condos, townhomes, more affordable housing, then that starts to impact the, um, the uh, not the economy, the uh, not, 
what am I trying to say? The environment. So envir there's environmental impact on doing certain things that that are that could that mess up with pollution and all of uh, other things. So there's this balance, right? So these people get happy, and then over here, these folks aren't happy because it's of the not just the economic, the environmental footprint of multifamily housing and places and so forth. And then this is big, this Community Reinvestment Act, which is to help you know lower to moderate income areas. There's always going to be programs coming out. There are now that um, banks and mortgage companies will get behind that are for specific areas to invest in and or buy homes. And that's everything from your teacher, your you know your first responder programs. Those are all coming to the forefront again as well. Um, so subscribing to Keeping Current Matters, and in our show notes today, we have a link to the, to our our try, you can try uh, Keeping Current Matters KCM 14 days free trial. Uh, then you get a $25 gift card if you sign up. It's 25 bucks a month. I have the higher upgraded one for 40 bucks a month because I get videos and I get social media graphics. You can you can get everything you need with the $25 a month one. I'm telling you, I use it every day for blog posts, and uh, it's just well worth the 25 bucks to get the monthly statistics on what's happening in our our country uh, nationally economy, housing, you'll stay on top of it. You, it will really help you be an industry expert. The other things that will be in the show notes for you is uh, I recommend that uh, at least four or five places that I like to go to, Matt, for uh, data on what's going on with the housing is HousingWire, housingwire.com. Mm -hmm. Now, they've all gone to subscription stuff. I'm telling you, you can get some free you know, content, but if you want to dig dive in deeper, you're probably going to have to subscribe, but check out Housing Wire, Business Insider, and DS News. DS News stands for Default Servicing News. That's where you'll stay on top of what's happening. But they talk about everything. It's just like news channels for mortgage and real estate experts. Um, you know, for for all of us. Stay. Those are three. I like CNBC also for uh, information on finance, economy, and housing. Uh, and there's a few others, and we'll, I'll put the links to where you can you can subscribe to their emails so that you can stay on top of what's happening. Because uh, there's going to be a lot happening. Let's face it, we've got a new administration. Um, you know, it's all about let's jump in there and start doing things. We're going to see how quickly the Congress is going to work together or not. So are we going to have some bipartisanship going on? It's going to be interesting to watch that, don't you think, Matt? Absolutely. I mean, you know, I think there's a, the effort is there. But it comes down to, it can be a quagmire again if, if everybody gets in the way and everybody has to, you know, I just hope that maybe we need to teach them a class on collaborative deal making. Yeah, uh, exactly. Well, here's the, the I, you know what, uh, you know, not I'll, everybody I'll, has to win. Why don't we take care? You guys were elected to take care of the people. I get everybody has differing views what that means to be taken care of. And it really has to do with what your income level is, frankly. So but there's a, isn't there a way that everybody gets to win something? So let's see if they can go down that path. Okay, it's kind of, it's a, you know, it's a whole different landscape right now. I mean, you know, it, it depends on what side of the aisle that you uh, happen to uh, agree with, but uh, you know, the, uh, the Democrats only need 10 senators to get this legislation passed. So it's a little different ball game now than it was, you know, just uh, last week. So it's going uh, we'll to see what happens. It's going to take uh, all the, all the, all the pundits, all the people that know how these things work. It's not going to just be presented and a bill presented. It's probably going to take several months of Absolutely. negotiating to whatever the final version of that is. And then we'll be able to come back and talk about all right, what is really happening. How does it impact real estate? And then we'll share ideas of how do you leverage that and getting back in touch with your clients and so forth. But right now, it's stuff that you could be putting into your newsletter. Here's what's happening. Here's what may be coming down the pike. We'll keep you posted. We're your source, your real estate source, right? So that's what I, how I recommend that you start using this information and stay informed. Don't be the, the, the last guy or gal out there that's like, what? There's a $15,000 tax credit? Um, I, I wish I knew that because it, then you can market and leverage all this once we know it. But right now, we don't have it, right? Right now, all we know, all we have for sure is an extension of the, of the eviction and the mortgage forbearance. Um, the foreclosure uh, moratoriums right now. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube.
We just have a quick home tip today. Uh, you know, a lot of us have been uh, kind of uh, housebound for the last almost year. And, uh, you know, Jan and I have talked extensively about making your your space your space. And, um, you know, uh, and you're, uh, if you have been home and your kids have been home and online uh, education and your spouse has been in another room, Zooming along as well, everyone's got their, their own thing. And I think that probably more than anything else, we have become very uh, in tune with our environment at home. And I, I know that I have, and I've made some changes in, in my location. And you know what? One thing I think that people always have a little problem with is paint color. And at the first of the year, every year, a lot of people come out with their color palettes for 2021. Bear Paint just recently came out with their 2021 uh, uh, paint palette. I'm going to share that with you today. If you are uh, listening on the podcast, go to our show notes. We're going to have a link over to the Bear site. It's, a, it's just a great, fun tool. And if you are a real estate agent, this is a great tool to not only use for yourself, but to use with your buyers and sellers too, because I think paint color can always be one of those things that people have a little bit uh, of a hard time. I'm uh, picking. I know that my wife and I, when we painted in the past, you know, you run down to Home Depot, you get the color swatches, you put them on the wall, you do the little, you know, paint, paint tests, and you have like nine different colors to try to figure out what's going to be the best. Just, you know, let the professionals take care of it yourself. I'll tell you one thing I noticed when I was looking at these colors versus, because I went back and researched what, what were the Bear tw uh, 2020 colors and what were the Bear um, 2019 colors. And things have really changed for 2021. I think that what we all need right now is a little bit of calm in our life, right? So the paint, the uh, Bear paint palette actually has uh, really calmed down. It is much more soothing. It's much mm -hmm. more meditative uh, than it has been in the past. I found that to be very interesting. So instead of going from what we have been in into this wild, crazy uh, palette of colors, it is all very zen-like. So I'm going to actually uh, flip over here so we can take a look at the color trends for 2020. And once again, this is from Bear. There's a lot of different uh, people out there that uh, do color trending. Uh, but you can just see right there from the very start, it's almost like, <sighs> but to elevate your comfort zone. Right. It's so cool. You're going to like this that are on this page. Yeah. This site is actually very, very interactive. So like I said, this would be a very cool thing for you to share with your clients. And you're either in an open house talking about, you know, well, you could do this right. or you could yeah. do that, you know, or with your buyers as you're walking through homes on a home tour. Or if the seller is looking to do some repainting in their house to actually attract the uh, current buyer. Yeah that's coming in. These are some good options for you here for both interior and exterior of your home. So you can see a lot of the earth tones here. And like I said, I, we're not going to go into a lot of this because those of you that are listening without the video, you can't really see a lot of what's going on here. But as you can, mm -hmm. as you can see, Jan, or anyone that's watching is that the color palettes are much more, they're much more muted and they're much more calm, right? Yeah, this, I like that. This side is awesome because it goes through and it talks about colors you can use for casual comfort. What you need to put in your calm zone, you know, the blues no, and greens yeah. that are calming. Can I ask you, I yeah. that wasn't on their site a year ago, the calm zone. Uh, you know what? I don't remember if these, well, these, yeah, these were actually, you're, 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 you're like right. I look like at meditative, it. like workspace. Yeah, and exactly. Very interesting. You know, there's the, the subtle focus area, the quiet haven, which, you know, are more bolder, richer colors. Uh, the optimistic view, which is the bolder, right. you know, the brighter, brighter colors. And then there's the outdoor escape uh, section that kind of talks about the colors that are the most popular right now for um, outdoor uh, of your home. The great thing about this, I'm going to click on this so you can kind of see what you can do here. Uh, each one of these sections, you can go in and learn a little bit more about that, uh, the color uh, branding there. And then you can actually go in and actually change the colors on a house, which I think is a really fun tool. So they have a house on here and I'll tell you, you know, uh, a color that I really like that I have found really appealing and something that I've seen be much more popular over the last, you know, probably three or four years is a much lighter house color and then a much, much darker trim. As a matter of fact, I've seen a lot of homes that are not a bright, bright white, but there are white uh, base foundation and then the our base color and then the trim is like a really dark even black and I actually really love that color combination. So let me show you what this tool does. If you click on like this dark color here and then go up to the trim, it changes the trim color on the actual house. Yeah. So you can get an idea of what that darker trim and lighter trim color uh, goes here. You know, Jan's a purple fan. So let's pick up, let's go over here and, and see what the house looks like in purple. So you can do a lot of play. Purple and kind of a, a charcoal gray. Yeah. yeah. So and what about the door? Doors are powerful. So don't, what do you, don't, what do you think about uh, house, houses that have 
whatever the color, but the door is the signature. When you say the trim. A, a lot of people will use, will have very, very monochromatic house colors and then their mm -hmm. door the is, trim their the door is point, right? Out, right? A dark black door, uh, even though that doesn't sound appealing, can be, it can really elevate and make your house look more elegant. A lot of people put just really bright red doors with a monochromatic type of color scheme yeah. on their house to make their, their front door pop. Uh, you know, a lot of front doors are, are primarily glass. So, you know, there's, there's not a lot to that. So it all depends on what kind of door you have, <laughs> if you want to make it pop or not. Uh, but there's a lot you can do with house Pretty color. Cool. So there's your quick home tip for the day. On In our show notes is a link over to the Bear uh, Color Palette. And you can go in there and just play to your heart contents, uh, changing uh, rooms inside your house, and then go into the outside of the house to uh, check out some uh, some exteriors. I like there. to admit, I, even just people are doing this right now because they're homebound. And even if they're not thinking of buying or selling a home, they may want to just change your energy by changing a room and painting it. Painting That's exactly room. right. New and feeling and color and color can bring it to a different, uh, you know, emotion, feeling, whatever you want it to be. Change the entire mood and feel of your of your your daily life while you're while you're still quarantining if you are so anyway that's your home tip for today all right everyone that's a wrap for episode 151 of the wandering but not lost podcast where real estate and reality meet all of our show notes over at wbnlpodcast.com if you have been watching us on youtube make sure you like this video subscribe to our channel and uh, you know go ahead and, and, and share it uh with with a friend and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you get reminded every week when the podcast drops. Jenna Bryan, so what else? I, did you watch the show that was after the inauguration last night? No, I missed it because it was late here and I had yeah. put so much energy into watching that, but I did see the replay and it was brilliant. I didn't know how cool it was going to be. I personally think this is the way inauguration should run forever. It was a well-executed, very, very well-produced um, well program. At 90 minutes, spot, you know, uh, with Tom Hanks as the host, how can you get better than that? Oh, Katy Perry at the end, just with the orchestrated fireworks display was just quite a way to end it. It reminded me of when they did the, you know, the whole thing. Here's what the, the thing that I'm learning, like you're saying, it's how you can be creative in a pandemic and yeah. find a way to be safe and do things and still have it be. I mean, that's what's happened. We talked about that on our podcast about how tv and media have done things to adjust that have become maybe that's the way things are going to continue on i mean i, I, I enjoyed that I thought it was brilliant. And, you know, speaking of the fireworks, it's I, kind of where I was going on this. You know, my sweet pea and I worked at Disneyland for years and years and years. And really, it, I've always said that no one can beat Disney when it comes to fireworks. That fireworks show last night was amazing. I have never seen so many shells awesome. in a show ever in my entire life. That was, it was amazing. It blew me away. Matter of fact, Laura was like, I've never seen you, you know, because actually, honestly, because we worked at Disney for such a long, fireworks are not as big a deal to us because they used to see them every day, right? right. Um, but that blew me away. It really blew me away. So it's good crazy. job uh, for the producers of that production. It was incredible. Well, now it's time to get to work, everyone, including us. So we're festi festivities are over. No matter what side of the aisle you're on, everyone, um, we're hoping that we can all figure out a way to get work together and get some things done in the country, get the virus under control, get our economy going again. Luckily, real estate's going to continue to trudge on and, and lead the way, but we're going to stay, we're going to help you stay up to speed on how and what and why so that you can be the best real estate professional you want to be. That's right. That's right. And we're going to help you with that side of your career. We also want you to, to take care of yourself. So make sure you get up, get out, mask up, stay safe, and be, a, be forever wandering, but not lost.